So I know you've talked a bit to our top 200 talent in the public service and you talked to public service chief executives. If you could distill out your advice for them into a sentence or two, what would you say? Uh, just go for it. You know, we're only here sort of once and, um, uh, and, I, and I think if all of us really try to make a difference each day and get our organisations to make a difference each day, what I've seen though is some of these things take a long time to move, so having a portfolio of wins, so being very clear, look for the next three years we're going to do this, this, this and this and then keep reinforcing during that time period, but also um, find some small wins so people get that, um, uh, that feedback of actually um, achieving things, that's an intoxicating thing. If you create this uh, uh, positive virtuous feedback cycle, like there's no one more uh, kind of humbled by all the sort of stuff that we're seeing than me. You know, I still think of myself as an 18-year-old skateboarder sort of skating around as I'm walking around town thinking, oh, I could hit that on my, on my board. You know, like, like I just think this, um, you know, having fun with people, you spend so much time at work, you might as well be um, enjoying it and actually treasure that experience. You know, you, you do form great relationships and being part of a team that achieves something is a really cool thing. So we've always let our personalities come through and I think that gives you the opportunity. Once people really get you, then they understand, you know, how, when you have to say something that's hard or something that's really exciting, it's just so much more genuine. So we, you know, we've always found it a very natural thing to just put ourselves out there and you know we're a collection of flawed idiots. It sounds like you've thought quite hard about the signs and the symbols, the informal elements of leadership as well as the formal ones. Yes, because that's, that, <laughs> that comes to the, the, the thorny issue um, of which many books have been written um, about authenticity. Mm. Uh, and it is a sort of thing uh, that the more people strive to be it, uh, the less they are it. Mm. So people who go off to authenticity school <laughs> uh, generally come back wooden and contrived. Mm. Um, and that's because authenticity requires you to put yourself out there um, because that's what people that's what people see and respect and so you know kitchen sessions are about me putting myself out there fronting the staff every week is basically about the team putting itself out there and saying well here we are this is how we're doing it I've actually spoken you know to my staff on internal seminars I've spoken about authentic leadership I've spoken openly with my staff about experiences that I've had in my leadership journey um, that I use as I am working with and, and, trying to, and trying to be an effective leader with them. I work with managers in that, in that vein all the time because part of the deal um, is actually uh, mentoring up um, and developing your staff so that they have the requisite skills uh, to deliver the sorts of leadership that you need delivered uh, in your organisation. That does not come by chance, that again takes a lot of hard work. Peter, one of the complexities of being a public sector chief executive is that very often you need to lead through others. I think so. I always used to say that leaders are working for me. Um, you don't have to lead really well but you do have to lead. You know, you yeah. don't have to do this really well, but you do need to give it a go. This is New Zealand. Most people will give you a fair go if they see that you're being honest and just and really trying. Mm. But if you're up there, you know, spinning the party line, saying stuff you don't really believe in, uh, most people will get that in a nanosecond. Uh, and you're not being genuine. You know, you're not being open. There'll be no trust. Mm.